Hello, Schmoville. Well, we are now on episode 26, uh, heading still in phase two. We're we'll in phase two for a little bit here. Very excited this channel is doing so well, and you guys are listening to all the podcasts and really enjoying it. For those who are finding the, these episodes for the first time, I hope you're enjoying them. Uh, I'm enjoying revisiting them. A lot of fun stuff, and this one is absolutely a fun one to listen to because it's myself, Mark, and Catherine all back in the studio together talking about both the Hunger Games had just been the first trailer to come out. So Catherine and I were big book fans, big, the big book fans. So we kind of talked about what we thought of the trailer and how we felt about Jennifer Lawrence getting cast as Katniss and Mark, again, talking about how he doesn't read. And then we talked a little bit about Game of Thrones and then we all... I kind of crapped on Twilight for a lot of it, and Mark was trying to defend it a little bit, but then realized he couldn't because of how terrible it was. So that's a lot of fun listening to all the Twilight conversations, but it's also a lot of fun hearing about the first time I met Ivan Reitman uh, at the Twilight screening and the dopey thing that I did when I met him. So that's in there as well, and then we get into some more stuff. We talk about some kids' movies, talk about Arthur Christmas and Happy Feet 2, and then... um, then uh, the Muppets, and then we end it with, I think it was the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo was coming out, so we talk about that as well and our, uh, how we felt about that one, and that was it. It's a lot of fun just listening to all this stuff, and it's going to be really cool to be able to throw people back to this channel in next this Thursday, by the way, guys, April 3rd, 7 to 9 p.m. live. PST, we are going to be in the Phase 5, that's right, Phase 5 podcast coming back, so make sure you check that out, enjoy this, and there are going to be a lot of familiar faces uh, in Phase 5, yeah, and it could be something like this, thanks guys, thanks. All right, once again, we are back as the Schmoes No Podcast, it's me, Christian Harloff, Hey, Mark Ellis. Hey, welcome uh, back, Back buddy. in studio. I was uh, out building a hospital uh, in Antarctica well, you're, for penguins. Well, you're lucky that you're back because um, our co-host, the mm-hmm. lovely Catherine Reitman. I'm Catherine, here also. Was knocking it down. And oh, breaking man. it down. Excuse me. She's breaking it down. Breaking it down.com. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Is That's it a right. .com now? Uh, no, it should be. Yeah, it, it should, should be. be. All right, so we are Baby back. Steps. You guys had fun while I was out. We did. It was. Uh, I just feel like things were like really nice and like calm and playful. And nice. Well, the storm is back, uh, baby. Get ready to get thunderstruck because uh, Ellis is back in the studio. I think I got thunderstruck once in college. <laughs> well, while you, you a lot of things happened while you were gone. You know, we did. Uh, the, you punked the, Jeremy. We punked Jeremy yes. with Katie awesome. Sackhoff. It was awesome. It yeah. was a lot of fun. And Jeremy, you were missed. Jeremy appreciated it as well. Uh, and then we also did last week. We Jeremy came back on and we talked about the U Reviewers Awards. Mm-hmm. We, <laughs> that was the one I called you guys. Yes, we, it, we, you we, we got into a tiff about Michael Bay, and I was screaming about. I was. Uh, I ended up defending Michael Bay, yelling. I was in a parking lot on the road somewhere, right. <laughs> yelling about. No, I mean I understand where he's coming from. It was just a really surreal day for me. I was up too early. Yeah. So. That's all right. Don't worry about it. Um, So this week, it's going to be the three of us, and we're going to be here. We're going to talk about a couple things that happened over the past week and just kind of sharing our thoughts because a lot of things happen in the movie world. One of those things, and I, in honor of that, I'm actually wearing a shirt. Oh, boy. We are going to be talking about they released, finally, the Hunger Games trailer. I am so excited about this movie. Now, see, Catherine, I didn't know, because I've had to deal with Harloff being a huge Hunger Games nerd ever since the books came out. I did not know that you, too, had read all the books. In a week. And that you were you read all three in a week? Oh, my God. I just got obsessed. How You start yeah. these books, and it's yeah. just like a fever. Yeah, they're not, listen, and, and I'm the first to admit, they're not like the most well-written books of all time they're they're not but they're so candy. it's pure it's candy pure candy but so addicting you you are so attached to the characters yeah and and look my, for me i love the first and second book and the second one almost maybe better than the first the third one is the worst of the three but it's still a great book you know what it's like it's like the girl with the dragon tattoo, except it's like a little more dirty. You know what I mean? Like it's like a JV version or something. You think it's dirtier than the girl with the dragon tattoo? Well, no, girl. With the, but like, girl with the dragon tattoo is like a very adult book. This right. is like like a like a playground dirty junior high version. Yeah, of it. but that this is what scares me about the movie. The th- well, we can talk about the things that don't scare me. There's a lot of about the Hunger Games. Movie yes, about the Hunger Games movie. When I fir- when I first heard about it, was the fact that they're doing it PG thirteen. Uh oh. 
You're big on ratings, man. Yes, but here's the thing. Rightly so. Yes, especially for this one because there's a lot of graphic detail in this book about the way some of these kids get killed. And, yep. Yeah. And uh, and how are you going to do that? But well, it's also like the line of they could either make this like Twilight or they could make this like the girl with the dragon tattoo. Right. They can make an adult film. Well, they can also make it like, like The Dark Knight. And where like it was PG thirteen, and that was a dark, gritty movie. Yeah, right? I think you can get away with a lot with a PG thirteen. It, it, it ain't like John Woo is going to be directing the action scene, and like a spear is going to go through someone's head in slow motion. You can you can artistically make it yes. as violent as you want, and just don't you don't have to show everything. Yes, no, and but don't you think they want? I mean, they really want young girl audience. Well, I think that I, I, that's the difference between Twilight and this, though, because they have more of an audience than just the young teenage girls. But yes, I think that takes into consideration the PG thirteen. But right. You got to get the kids in there with, yes. it, with the hunger games, and right? I agree with yeah. this. But the thing is, the MPAA is also a lot more lenient on violence than they are with sex and right. nudity and language. You just can't drop it, as long as Woody Harrelson and Donald Sutherland aren't dropping f bombs left and right. Then you're going to get a PG thirteen rating, right. right? And I think that that's that. It's, you can even show a boob if you want. I'm okay now. The fact that they said that Gary Ross was doing this, who this is, you know, a little not traditional for him to do a movie like this. What's but he done? What you, give done, me his give me his resume? He's done Sea Biscuit. Okay, heard um, of it? Yeah, he did. Uh, Pleasantville. Uh huh. Loved it. Yeah. So, I mean, they're movies that you wouldn't associate that kind of material with this, but. Well, actually, Pleasantville is a great example because it's such a different world. Yes. And at, exactly. He knows how to paint a picture of a different world. Yeah. And that, to me. Like, so, let's talk about this trailer now. It opens up. Also, suppression. I mean, you know, they couldn't do yes. with color, they and, couldn't, and, you know. And he knows how to. Uh, or paint grime and and uh, and you know the, the 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 poverty as far as in Seabiscuit in the beginning right. of Seabiscuit. Now I'm the- treading water here, folks. I'm trying to get excited about the Hunger Games. I really am. Okay, and me- then but but then the trailer comes out right. Yes. And and Harloff, I, he you know he calls me at seven a.m. Hey, you got to watch the trailer and then get over here so we can review it. And it, the trailer is really cool because I saw the the teaser one mm-hmm. and it's just it's Jennifer Lawrence and some dude running around in the woods. Yeah, I don't know what's of course, going and on. You, and but I was intrigued. Right. right. And then this the, this new trailer comes out and. The, the vision of the future looked a little it looked a little campy, cool, but a little silly to me too. But by the end of the trailer, when they're all like getting ready to Five, begin, four, yeah, three, Ugh, I badass. was like, so holy badass. god, I, where's my nachos? I'm ready to watch this. Ugh, thing. Yeah. Why did you have to bring up nachos? Now I can't focus. <laughs> Two cups of cheese for the Hunger Games, <laughs> and that's, well, that's the thing is that now, now there are a lot of Hunger Games, and I'm a big Hunger Games fan, as is Catherine. Huge. I did not have the problem. There's some sometimes fanboys get a little too much. Like, and, and I am definitely one of them. But yeah, uh, some of the complaints I'm hearing on the internet that in the Hunger Games she runs and picks up a bag that's not orange. You know, oh it's like, boy. come on, oh really? Boy. Who cares? Well, I read bag? I read some of our comments and, and thank you guys for commenting on all the videos. I yes. I, I, I take them way too personally, so <laughs> <That's> <laughs> keep yeah. well, Have at it. The uh, the the one they said that like like Woody Harrelson's hair looked weird, or like like a couple of them had different hair colors or yeah, something like you that. You got one shot of Hamish, which is Woody Harrelson, yeah. and, he, yeah. and he looks disheveled. And in the books. Hamish is a disheveled mess, and well, he, casting in general. When I heard Jennifer let's talk Lawrence, about that, yes. let's discuss yes, schmoes. We have, yeah, we have we have a lo- we have different opinions on. I'm going to dive right into it let's because when it. I heard Jennifer Lawrence was going to be Katniss Everdeen, mm-hmm. I should first of all say that I think I should have been cast as Katniss Everdeen. I think this was the role of my life. If uh-huh. it was a I think it would have. Hey, you know what? I can oh, be serious. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Real serious. <laughs> Did you submit like a reel? Did you show him, hey, watch Ghostbusters 2. Like check out the first Girl 5 minutes. Puppy. How do you sleep with yourself, Mark Allen? <laughs> How dare you? We How got it in you? there. We got it yeah. in there at least once. <laughs> uh, all it takes. <laughs> Guys, I would have killed it. I mean, it's a great protagonist. I did not picture Jennifer Lawrence even a little bit. First of all, she's supposed to be tiny. She's supposed to be like a little rascal. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Kind of. Uh, Yeah. No, no, tough. Yeah, but she was not not like... Al Pacino small. No, but they can't. They constantly talk about her like slim figure, her right. like tiny right. figure. Okay. And Jennifer Lawrence, who is not by not any slim. means fat, no. but a curvaceous woman. Yes, and she's tall. And she's tall. She's, tall. she's enormous. But <laughs> she she's, is she's so tall. tall. Reitman's tall. clocking in at like six feet almost. You're kind of a tall chick. Aren't How dare you? you? She's five, like six. five six. <laughs> really? <laughs> it's because my personality is large. Yeah. It's All right. Dude. <laughs> now, so uh, Jennifer Lawrence gets cast. Yes, and I was actually thrilled by it, and I thought it was one of the best because the other one that I would have been okay with that they had. Mentioned was Haley Steinfeld uh, from True Grit. Yeah, yeah, she was so good and true. She was great and she was Grit. fantastic. And she had but not that, the right pick either. Okay, but that, that's the thing. Those were the two. And then there were other ones that I was just like, no, f f u f u f u. And you um, you've seen Winter's Bone. I have not seen that, Winter's that's, Bone. And that's my point with Jennifer Lawrence because I had seen Winter's Bone and then they mentioned it. And she in Winter's Bone is pretty much in District Twelve the whole movie. 
You know, and it's which like, is something in the Hunger Games. In the Hunger Games, yeah. where she's, it's like the she's poverty in white stricken, trash land in the in but it's Winter's but Bone. It was the attitude, and there was a survival skill, and the, the 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 character she played in Winter's Bone was very similar in a certain sense to Katniss. It's out. It's out. You know how Elijah Wood he booked, he that, booked being Frodo because he sent in a tape of like him running around the woods to no, Peter Jackson. Yeah, right. yeah. He like filmed himself auditioning for yeah. it. It sounds like Jennifer Lawrence, like Winter's Bone, is just her audition. It was. But, for the Hunger well, Games that's for exactly two hours. Right. right. And she ended up getting an Oscar nomination on the side. But that's so. exactly right. And that's what happened is that there was a lot of Catherine Reitman like bitching to um, Suzanne Collins when it all went down. And she's like, trust me, this is the right, this was the right pick. And now there have been a lot of people who have seen the footage and have changed their tune. Are well, you one of one, those people? 100%. Okay. The second I saw the trailer, I was like, all right, game on. Let's do this. Right. It got me so cranked, man. It looks great. She is one of the better actresses that are out there. No doubt. There and now. she's fantastic she's so in Winter's Bone, a film I don't like, but she's fantastic. I am not a huge fan of the film myself, but she made me want to watch it from beginning to end. Well, and she's very natural, and yes. my fear actually was they were going to cast like a Kristen Stewart or something, and right. it was going to feel... And she was rumored too, right. Exactly. Right, and it was going to feel sort of like hokey and cheesy yes. and teenagery and Jennifer Lawrence gives it a totally yep. different feel makes gives you that and that and that's why I don't mind when they cast this um you know the what's what's his name the Hemsworth kid who right. his William brother Hemsworth. right yeah. well, his the, brother, the brother of Thor he's, but not he's Loki the, the other one Thor is the is the Adam uh, Baldwin wait it's Chris and Liam right what's that what, what are their names it's Chris, Chris Hemsworth and, yeah. and, Liam, and Hemsworth. Liam Hemsworth Chris Hemsworth is the uh, Alec Baldwin yeah yes. he, not not you said Adam uh, Baldwin not Adam Baldwin like Alex excuse me he's Alec Baldwin as where we don't know anything about Liam yet except that he was in he was in the you know the Miley Cyrus's pants. That's yeah, all we in know. the early nineties, well was there played. a podcast when they're yeah. trying to prognosticate like how good is this William Baldwin guy going to be? He's in this movie Fair Game coming yeah. out, right? Well, right. That, so we great don't know. movie by the way, <laughs> but great movie. <laughs> but again, just that scene with him and uh, Jennifer Lawrence in the woods in that scene. If you guys are a fan of the book, in the beginning there, I believed he was Gale. I liked the way it was set up, and I don't have any problems with any of the casting at all. The only one that to, to me that I went. When they cast, and I went, huh, was Lenny Kravitz. I was about to say Lenny Kravitz. But I Lenny Kravitz in the movie. Yeah, he, play, wow. he plays um, Sina, who basically is the, he, the, when all these tributes, they, they get there, and they have they are just assigned to these, the tributes are, what are they, the, uh, the, the dressers. Right, the, right. They basically he's make, like the stylist. Exactly. He's a, but, he, but it's he's all the about. Bar, he's the barber on, on Hunger Games? But more, but more like. How very it's, straight it's like, But it's like. <laughs> He it's works like, at the no, but it's like image. It's try. It's like to try to like, you know, because this it is broadcast her. all over yeah. the place. So he's got. He's the one. The publicist. Pretty right. much, if um, you gotta have a guy that like does all the image and stuff like yes. that, Lenny's probably but, but the he, coolest guy to pick. But you in know the why book, he's a great pick is because he can actually bring a masculinity, yes, to sort of that stylist. Because as you're reading it, you're like, this could go many a ways. Yeah, absolutely, and also the thing was with that is that. What sold me on it, because Cinna also has to have a very peaceful thing to him as totally. well. And he has to have a, a very kind of calming thing to him. A lot of him. yoga. Yeah, it's true. And then when you see Lenny Kravitz's performance in Precious, yep. that will sell you. There's a scene where he's talking to Precious in, in, the the, hospital. in the hospital. And you watch that scene. If you're not sold on Lenny Kravitz, watch that scene. And if you're a Hunger Games fan, I'm telling you, because even his brief shot in the trailer I'm like okay I'm in well, you know yeah. what sold me on Lenny Kravitz casting is uh, is that he's got acting chops in the family because his mom was on the Jeffersons oh sure was she was yeah, a regular yeah, on the sure Jeffersons was. so yeah. as soon as I heard that I'm like can we get is is uh, is uh, uh, what what was George Jefferson's name <laughs> Sherman <laughs> can we get him in the Hunger Games yeah. <laughs> I think he died did he still alive is it Sherman Hemsley no, down yeah. or alert down. oh just, my just god saying, I miss I him I'm just saying uh, yeah but, for making some pop music the guy has a lot of depth actually yeah he does yeah. And, yeah. I, and I think I think that he's a good. I, the casting in this movie is great. The director is great. I like the fact it looks like they're sticking to the book for the most point. And I will say, if you guys saw our trailer review, and again, like I read the, I didn't read them in one week. I read them in two. But um, <laughs> how? Do, go ahead. Some of us can read quickly. <laughs> some of us are just smart. You know what I mean? Oh, some of us has lives. Yeah. Um, I, I, can we talk about because I complained about this a little bit on the on the trailer review? Is that it, the vision of the future to me, the way the future looks? It, it, do you not? Understand what I'm talking about? Where I, it I, looks a little demolition manny, it, you know. It yeah, but you have to. But you have to read the when you read the books and you see the difference because I thought it painted a perfect contrast to when you see those districts. And some people I've seen the comments are saying, "Well, District 12 is supposed to be a little. It's supposed to look like more poor than it is." You also have to also have to realize 
it is a port town, but it also has a town that has a capability of having those big, huge screens in there, and there's still technology right. in there. So that's, it, there's, it's a different type of poverty that we don't know, because it's like years and years and years into the future, after like a nuclear war and all this stuff. So it, it's, And all restaurants are now Taco Bell. That's right. But the difference, exactly. what I wanted to say on, um, on the, our trailer review... I had mentioned that President Snow in the book I- I isn't in the book. Donald it, Donald Sutherland. And I was wrong. I was wrong. He's uh, President Snow is in the is in the mm. book. He does the, he does that. Wait, that it's intro. Donald Sutherland. Yeah. Oh, you see, I, yeah. When you, when you see I didn't him see the, it. Oh, I didn't you, see you that didn't see part. The trailer oh, I saw the trailer. For some reason, I missed that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. And he gives, yeah, I, President Snow. He's a great cast for. Um, Blood on the loops. Perfect. So he is mentioned. He is in the first. He is. He is. And I. I for some reason, got that in number two uh, confused. But you know, he, even if he was, brief. even if Donald, so- even if that in. character, even if President Snow wasn't even in the Hunger Games, it, it would, to let Donald Sutherland do whatever he wants. Right, it's All true. right. But, get the guy in is, your movie. He's great. I mean, and he's he is such a prominent character in, in two and three. Oh, and in so three. big. Wow. Like he's he's like uh, Emperor style. Well, you, you have to me, read man. the books. Look, read the books. Oh, okay, and, and maybe I, I should ask the, the listeners this question: Is that now that I know a movie's coming out? Okay, it's not like I'm reading The Help five years ago before I knew that there was going to be a movie okay I, do i read it now because the movie's coming out in march do i want to ruin the ending of a movie i may as well walk up to you and be like hey can you tell me how war horse ends because no it's a different it's a different thing because it's like you're reading it and it's like because you you it becomes a lot more personal to you when it's also it, beca- it depends on the story like yeah. for instance something you know sometimes when they make the movie it infuses it in a different thing that you can't pick up on yeah. in the book this is actually such a good book like yes. it's just such a quick fun read really? well I gotta be honest I've never been able to be that asshole that says you know the book was so much better than the movie because I've never read the book before seeing a movie maybe this it. is the you one you should do it this time now, he's here's just a, not a big reader in general he's not, I've never though, seen but, him read anything I'm gonna be on a number biographies of, on Van Halen y- yeah I've read all those they're, they're sitting on the back of my toilet currently I think that uh I'm, I'm going to be on a lot of airplanes in the next couple of months. So either it's like I read Hunger Games or what you guys were telling me before we went live is that I should watch uh, Game, the, of Game, Game of Thrones. Thrones. I, yeah. would, I would say Hunger Games. You I have no, so much nerd to catch up on. No, because that's, that's a little different because there's so many different books. And I watched the first season of it. That's one that it's different for TV. And I actually share Mark's point of view now on, on that. Because, because the thing with Game of Thrones is... I didn't read them. They see th- Those books seem a little more dense. Like you said, Hunger Games is candy. Like, it, candy. Yeah. Game of Thrones it, feels yes. like you got some summer reading but, to do. But here's yeah, the difference, yeah. though, because in game in uh, Hunger Games for that first book, they're gonna they're gonna have to take stuff out, and move some stuff around. And you're inside the character's head for a certain thing, so you're turning a, a you know a, whatever it is, 250, 300 page book into a two hour movie. As where the the Game of Thrones, the first one, this is a whole season. So you're not really yeah. leaving much out. So you're, there's everything. So anything that you picture in your head pretty much happens. So right. it's, mm-hmm. not, it's not the same thing. It's but ten hours versus two hours. Yes. Now Mark said Mark had brought something up as far as you guys out there, if you're um, you know listening as far as you want Mark to read it, the way you comment on this, comment on the <laughs> iTunes. Go to iTunes, comment on. There's a comment section there, and rate and comment, and then that way you know more people will see it, and we can have a whole discussion on it. And we're going to start reading out some of your comments also. So make sure you rate on iTunes and comment on it. And if you're very impatient, just tweet. Just tweet us. Just go to Atchmo's No and just tell me why I should read Hunger Games. Look, I'm flying home for Thanksgiving, so maybe so I'll have some time. Maybe I maybe I'll read like 50 pages and see if it if it's if it fancies me. You know. Yeah, but don't tweet us. Do do the iTunes. Uh, do we don't want Twitter file? I thought not, not right now. Well, we want them to comment. This will be easier for them to comment on iTunes. I've and, and been start. out on the road trying to get us Twitter followers for the last two so weeks. Keep Mark doing that. Was saying Fighting earlier that he just wants more personal comments. That's right about his appearance. <laughs> but now, now as long as we could do Hunger Games, honestly, <laughs> tell me how sweaty I look. On, just talk on about camera. the way he looks. Yeah. He likes that. Well, you want to talk about the way people look? This is this next shitbox story we're about to talk to. Oh, you. great oh, segue, oh, Christian. Boy. My uh, goodness. Let's talk about this. Absolute fart fest <gasps> of Twilight Saga. You, <laughs> I am so Grouchy. sick of this shit. Like, and, and I am so. Oh, and, and this, I want to get back. To, shit, I forgot about something. It's okay. I, I want to hey, take can a I, breath. Can I jump? It's, it's oh, back. He, no, no, he it's, I'm all over the place. Up. It's been a because, long week because I'm sick of. There's two comparisons that I'm sick of. I'm sick of the first comparison with Hunger Games and Battle Royal, which is ridiculous because Battle Royal, the Japanese film, the only thing similar is the the kids fighting in a death match on TV. Then it stops. The second comparison. That's like Running Man. Right? Yeah. yeah, the yeah. second comparison that drives me nuts is Hunger Games and Twilight. As a love triangle, right. that's it. That's right. where it stops. And maybe it's got no like, vampires. No, no Hunger no Games is so much more sophisticated. And it has a plot. 
Yes. There aren't people in a, in a boathouse playing chess. Okay, right. but no, listen, this is, I understand that you don't like Twilight, and I, I'm not a huge Twilight fan. I just, I feel like I Bull come off, shit. I come off as that because I'm trying to, def- but I really don't understand the argument that Twilight doesn't have a plot. It's a very, you think ex- that well, last movie Twilight had a plot that like, we just watched? Yeah, they get, come on. they get married and she has a vampire baby. You said it yourself. <laughs> That's not a plot. That's an insane nonsense. Someone writing on, well, what are we going to do now? Put a vampire baby. Like I said in the review, there is, there is Jumping the shark, there is nuke the fridge, and then there is vampire baby. That's the three things that your franchise has gone to shit. The uh, Twilight I, movie. Listen, and I, I will stand here. I'm not going to say it's a good movie. This last movie, it's not. It, it's not a it's great. It's not movie. a good movie. Yeah. However, the previous films, many of which I enjoyed, it's you're, it's like comparing a romance novel. Yes. To a sci-fi novel totally with agree. the Hunger Games. Right. And, it's and just totally that, apples right. and, and a oranges. Sci-fi novel happens to have a love triangle that is hinted at. Is well, it's, it, also, it's not the focus. It's hinted at. I can't help but think it's because it's a female protagonist. It's like we don't really know what to do. You're right. You know what I, I mean? I, I absolutely agree. So we start, we start throwing labels around. Yeah, and well, she's late to I, I think it's too. more the fact that they, that they come from books and that a lot of kids are excited about yeah. both of them. I mean, it, the Twilight is more just you know teenage girls and Hunger Games is everybody. Yeah, and it's also, I think, the fact that you know we lost Harry Potter. We're, or thank God we're going to lose Twilight soon. So that everyone, because Twilight is... A, is How many more Twilight movies? Is it just one? There's only one part more. Now, I didn't read the Twilight series series because you know smart what, what if i did well, what if i actually this came? was the one that you read yeah, well, yeah what if i said that i'm not gonna read hunger games i'm not gonna watch game of thrones but twilight yeah i'm gonna read that <laughs> big time yeah. yeah i actually write my own fan fiction there, for twilight there is another <laughs> stephanie Meyer. I mean, we'll go back into twilight in a second but there is another stephanie meyer novel that people that it's being made and i think it's a pretty good director that's doing it too that a lot of people have actually told me about and that's called host Supposedly, it's it's going to be. Is it, uh, are we looking at more uh, vampires or? Uh, I think it's aliens. Werewolves, it's aliens. aliens. Oh, All right. thank yeah. goodness! All right, well, Christian, what about alien babies? Are you going to be? Are you going to complain al- about yes. aliens? Okay, so, alien okay. Babies, so no, I, no, I just want to know what sort of monsters are allowed to produce offspring. So vampire babies, no, we're not allowed to have a vampire baby. But an alien baby, you're cool. With. I just said no. <laughs> you, oh, you don't want an alien no, baby? No, I don't want alien babies. I don't well, where do you think? Where do you think fully I grown sit next vampires? To do, I do an alien, a review with alien babies every two days. Rude. I don't know what that means. Rude. No? You review alien babies? You, you're an alien baby. I'm an alien. I'm a fully grown alien. Okay. It's, it's, it's taken totally a very weird different. turn here on the Schmoes podcast. Quiet, you. <laughs> like you, you know, where do you think Nosferatu? They eventually they, oh, they look had this guy, to start big words, out Nosferatu. and be babies. You know. Whatever. All right. I just um, don't understand that you say it has, it has a story. If you don't like the story, it, that's fine. It had, I agree with Catherine in the fact that it had a story in, in like maybe the beginning of it. Yeah. Well, a little well, bit. You are not the target audience for this film. No, I know that. That's, that's like saying. No, I didn't say that. That's, that's my, th- and I've, uh, in our review, I said in the other Twilight movies that came out, I didn't kill them because I clearly said this movie is not for me. I'm not the demographic for this film. So I can understand it's one tree hill with vampires. But dare I say that. This stupid vampire baby, which I agree is stupid. I I didn't say it was smart, but it's it's there. It's it, like I'm all trying... things come from babies. Agreed, but I think <laughs> regardless. So if you can put that aside, Bill Condom. I mean, it's a beautiful film. I mean, there's some beautiful. <laughs> well, I wouldn't go that far. One hundred percent. No, listen. See, I saw your you say that in your review, and I don't agree with you. I like that okay. she brought up Bill Condon because we I had to cut this out of our review. We Harlow and I had a had a spirited debate as yeah. we as we're wont to do about Bill Condon because I think he did the best he could with that with, with that material. One hundred percent. I don't you know? agree. I think that he, I think he directs actors poorly in this one. I think that he. I think some of the stuff that he did. Listen, he ain't exactly working no, with Pacino and De Niro I here. You can't that. get water out of stones. I, I mean, well, the other ones did, and there was. I mean, this was the worst one out of all of them. This was the worst. The one. acting was the worst. The worst, and one. that's my 100%. point. That's my thing is that these other people who directed these movies were able to get something. They got something because this. I mean, everything that Taylor Lautner says is the funniest thing that's been said. This is it's ridiculous. Bucky, Bucky Larson type stuff. It's ridiculous. It's. I just feel like because this movie, this doesn't fall into a normal category to me. I don't think it's black or white like that. I don't think it's a good movie, but I also can see it for what it is. It's an interesting piece of the other thing that I I agree. You know, you know what I did appreciate though is, and I think you can too, Christian. Is is the uh, the special effects were uh, were were light years better than they were in the first one. The werewolves looked really cool. They they looked real. And can you guys be honest to me? When those wolves start charging, (laughs) does your heart rate go up? No, it's cool. And and, yeah, and and Catherine. Check out Catherine's review on um, youtube.com slash Catherine Yes, on <clears throat> Twilight. And she, this is a good point in the fact that she said when they turn 
into the wolves. You see everybody get ready. And then these assholes have this conversation. Oh, it's retarded. It's yeah. so it's stupid. It's, it's really like, everyone starts it cracking up. I think, look who's talking three. You started to be able to hear the dogs talk too. And right. I think yeah. that that's, that's kind of, because you, oh, that's you the hear, line. yeah. That's I didn't know what line. scene was funnier. That scene with the wolves mm-hmm. or the blazing saddles when everyone starts farting around the campfire. <laughs> it's like both of those scenes were so ridiculous. Ridiculous. It was, I mean, it's, and it went on forever. My bottom, Endless. my bottom line with the whole Twilight thing is, I, I think that it's it, it, the teenage girls get way too excited about it because they want to get excited about something, which yeah. is fine. It's and their, I think it's that, their thing. It's their Star Wars. But, but I also think that that people hate it because people like like you need a pillow to scream into, and people like hating it just to hate it. So I, I agree I'm on neither you. team. I enjoy it for for the for the silly, sometimes stupid thing it is. It's a lot like watching an old episode of 90210. Yeah. Do I, I take it seriously? I no, you. but it's a fun. But it's I, a fun thing. I, to I do, do you know agree. There is no apolo- uh, there is no excusing indulgence, and this movie should be one. There shouldn't be a part one no, and a part exactly. two. Not a lot happens. It's, distra- that it's was, highly and indulgent. That's my point of this movie. Like again, Mark, I agree with what you just said. For Thank how, you. what number? How many of these? What number is this? I like? think it's the fourth one. Fourth or fifth? I'm, I'm pretty sure it's thirty six. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> like, the other the other thirty five, if you will. Um, I agree with you on all, everything you just said. That you have to look at it like, okay, this is not for me. This is, but this movie, to where Catherine said, it's stretched out and it's clearly. Just to make money, because Harry Potter, the ones that came out, the books one and two, yeah. so much happens. So much happens. You right. have to, I understand the need for two movies. Right. I get it. This one, no. This is them saying to their audience, "More money, please." Yes, and it's just like, oh, don't you want to? You know, you want to see them for at least four and a half more hours. But Come girl, on, she but, could you look know, into it, the it, mirror a little more. Girls, oh. uh, it, girls will pay to see it, but it, but also I think it's good that they get excited for it. So I don't have a problem with it. Again, uh, I, I got just, to see it for. Yeah, you, it's you not know what? My feelings. It, it, going, I saw it for free and felt ripped off. I know. <laughs> Going to see Twilight, though, was a fun experience for both of us. Why? Yes, it was. Because, because we got to meet uh, somebody that we've looked up to for a long time. Yes. And Taylor Lautner was there? Taylor no, I, was the there. popcorn guy. that he's, he, he's always been too busy. Every time I've, you can know, I yeah. set up the story, please? Yes, you sure. can. So, you know, we, we get to see movies early, and uh, we usually get a plus one. This, for this screening, for some reason, I could not get a plus one to save my life. And I would have loved to take my director. I would love to take a lot of people. Yeah. And last minute, my dad calls me. He's in L.A., and uh, I'm speaking of Ivan Reitman, for those who don't know. That's your dad? That's my father. Holy shit. Yeah. He, I made, know, he made a movie with a marshmallow man. Look it up. He also happens to be an awesome dad, for the record. That's really cool. Um, and he's, I often hang out with him. We're, we're good buds. Dad, if you're listening, what's up, player? Comedy God. <laughs> <laughs> but he calls me and he goes, what are you doing tonight? I said, I'm going to see Twilight. And my dad goes, oh, I want to go. And I'm like, hey, dad, I, I can't get a plus one. I'm sorry. You know? And he goes, I'll call you back. <laughs> <laughs> he calls me Dad's 30 going to battle, minutes yeah. later he's like yeah I'll meet you at the theater oh that's awesome he totally got in this is the difference between going as a YouTube critic right. and uh-huh. as Ivan Reitman's daughter right. I show up to get in line I go and give my name as one does to collect your you know to go in and I'm there's a guy waiting the head of PR for Summit is there mm-hmm. I, I think you know his name I think it was Ryan Fonz probably. I think so really sweet guy really nice guy and uh, he immediately Ushers my father and I to reserved seats. This is now, you know, usually we're battling for seats. Right. Christian and I are usually texting each other, being like, "Hey, can you save me a seat? I'm running late." Or vice right. versa. And this ain't a normal screening. They, they, this is like, like they let some some girl. I mean, they, they this were place showing is in a three different theaters. It's a, it, it was, it a, zoo. was packed. It's a zoo. And yeah. by the way, if you're going to go see this movie, that's how you want to see it. You want to see it surrounded by screaming fans. Mm-hmm. Regardless, we sit down, and I all of a sudden realize, oh my god, Mark and Christian are going to lose their minds. <laughs> Because I know how you feel I about was my father. So, I yeah. was so excited when yeah. you So I decide. I played it cool, too. Uh, you way. played it too cool. Uh. So I reserve, <laughs> I reserve two seats because uh, there's two seats for my dad and I. And I, I'm looking around and Krishna had said to me, could you save us some seats? And it's a packed theater. And so I decided to take advantage of the old Reitman angle. Mm-hmm. And the guy, you know, the summit guy was helping me. I said, can we reserve two more seats? I'm so sorry. And it's a big hassle. Right. But we managed to get two seats. And Mark shows up and I, I usher him to the seat. Christian and Mark was so sweet to my dad. He was really nice. And <laughs> Christian we comes running. We had a good chat. In. We're, we're, we're playing highlight this week. I'm weekend. pretty sure you called him bro. Uh, I don't think I called him bro. Or bud. I don't. Maybe. maybe Probably a bud. Bud, bud, maybe is, a bud. is definitely. Bud. Hey, bud. Yeah. That's a, that's an ellicism. Yeah. I don't open with bud, but no, I close but you with, throw, yeah. I, I close with bud. Okay. Yeah. You were like, how you doing, bud? Yeah. 
And my dad, who is like very old school, is like, nice to meet you. I've heard so many lovely things. I don't think I opened with Bud. I'm pretty sure I didn't know. You dropped Bud. a Bud. Bud went in there a, somehow. A Bud, Bud was, was in, in there somewhere. It wasn't Rosebud. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. You were talking about the beer brand. Yeah. yeah. Pretty sure you opened with it. Which I'm happy to show. Christian comes in late. Because he was running around. Mm-hmm. He comes running, running around. around. I was caught in traffic. Like, it was, again, in this stupid city. Tra- cars should be blown off the... Okay. Oh, Christian, easy. running around covers that, Christian. Yeah. All right, all right. He comes running in because he was dealing with traffic in this city. Uh-huh. And my father stands up because I said, you know, the Schmoes have been so nice to me. They've been really supportive of me in this, you know, new community. And my dad stands up to extend his hand. And Christian comes in and without even icon. He's like, yeah, nice to meet you. No I'm, way. I'm going to be. Oh, man. <laughs> no. I got places to you be. You blew off Ivan, right? No, I did not. What are you doing? That's bullshit goes, because the first thing, wait a minute. First thing that came in, I said, and I played it cool. And I was like, holy shit, it's Ivan Reitman. Yeah. First thing, even before I said hello to Catherine, I extended my hand. And I said, very nice to meet you, sir. And then I wanted to make sure there was so Many. You are full no of way. shit. No way. No way. I said, very nice to meet you, sir. I'm telling you right now. Because Here is I'm how not- that's not true. Because my I had charged my dad up so much to like, you know, yeah. be really sweet to you guys. When he stood up, my dad extends his hand for like a nice moment. Christian grabs it and almost high fives it. No way. It was like, it was like. Christian. This is I mean, embarrassing. Well, this look, is, first that's of the way all. It came out. In my head, it looks totally different. Okay, well, look, I'm glad I got to, uh, I'm glad I got to write him off. first. Then he blew him off. He goes, yeah, I mean, this is, there's a real press screening in the other one. It said, I said something like that. No, but I was like, there was. I, I was saying this. And I, you know what? Here's here's definitely what happened because this is what went on in my head. I said, all right, here's what I'm going to do because I went into this theater and there's no one in this theater. Okay, like there, like there was. And in, it was in start, the, the, in back the one that theater. I went into, yeah. there was like they started, you know, putting press into it, and it was so peaceful and it was so nice. And I'm like, I've got to go get Mark. I have to go get Catherine. You have, I have to, to go get Mr. Mark. Reitman, and yeah. I have to go get all of them, and I'm going to go save everybody. <laughs> you got to rescue us from this Justin yes. Bieber concert. And I'm going to bring in. them into this, and I'm going to look like the hero, and all of us are going to sit together, and it's going to be such a nice moment. Although, the way I guess it came out was like I was like Speedy Gonzalez. I come in there looking like I just did like four lines of coke in the bathroom. Yeah. And that explains a lot. But cut to reality. When Christian leaves, my dad and I sit back down, and I'm like, would you rather go to this supposed press theater he goes they're all press screenings besides who doesn't want to watch it with the fans there you go there you go F- listen he, he you want to go sit alone for the twilight screening with a bunch of were, angry no, critics. No, there were, no no there were a lot of people in there and there were screaming fans in there as well but it was just that when i you have to realize that mark and i came back from a screening we were on we had just seen um arthur, arthur christmas. christmas and it was on the other side of town so i was racing over as running and then the thing had Mark, and what happened also, you, I don't know if you know, the seat that your dad had saved us with Mark and myself was stolen from me. So, yeah, it was, right. some that other sucks. guy with his that. girlfriend, there was a mix-up. So what I offered to do was, because I don't mind sitting in the front row, and I figured it'd be kind of funny, too. So I was going to let Christian have the good seat, then I was going to go sit in the front row next to, like, four teenage girls and you're just like be the a, creep. You're, like, yeah. such a sweet guy. <laughs> I mean, I am my, awesome. dad, my dad noticed that for I'm, sure. I'm <laughs> eligible, ladies. What? No. no. Catherine like, is not looking in my direction We right went now. afterwards, and, like, my dad were just like, Mark <laughs> is such a nice guy. Yeah, the guy's just yeah. talented. Yeah. Funny, lovable, yep. sweet, considerate. Yeah, right. That Christian guy. I don't know if you should be interacting with. Him. That's well, that's fine. That's, regardless of how the fine. meeting actually went on, you know what? I was thinking about this today. Is that it's hilarious that we meet Ivan Reitman. My six-year-old self just punched me in the face. Yeah, probably. really, he should have. Yeah. Not uh, the first time. We met Ivan Reitman at a screening of Twilight. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Isn't that? It's, it's, it's it, like it's it, like meeting Alfred Hitchcock uh, at a screening of Leprechaun Four. You just don't think that's the way it's going to go it, down. It but. was. It, listen, I, I did also. I was like that's, and I left that screening going that's the way I met Ivan Reitman flew in there I you felt, did fine you I did felt, fine I did feel awkward he did though. not do fine he did terrible I did, oh, I did feel I awkward I represented though. both of us <laughs> when, I, when, I shook, when I shook his hand I, because I wanted to shake his hand first this sucks I can't believe this happening well and then I apologize and then to make it even more beautiful Mark Ellis the next day shows up to meet me for lunch with a Ghostbusters shirt on and mm-hmm. I told my dad mm-hmm. and my dad was like mm-hmm. This confirms everything I was thinking. That Mark Ellis is just such a great guy. And by the way, if you drop Reitman's name, I went into Quiznos, got a free sandwich. I'm like, hi, I'm Ivan Reitman's daughter, and they just gave it to me. Well, well we but, look similar. But your dad does appreciate good segues, and I will segue into saying there is news about Mr. Ivan Reitman that came out this week also. Really? And that news is the fact that his production company mm-hmm. is putting together the Michael Jackson biopic. True, true or false? Oh, it's there you true. go. Okay. I mean, he wouldn't want me to say it on Christian Harloff's podcast, probably, <laughs> but it's true. Wow. Now, now, is, is your, I'm gonna. What's his favorite meal? Is your dad a? Uh, is your was is your dad a big Michael Jackson fan? 
Like, uh, abs- I mean, you know, it's that sort of genre, that era of... W- when he directed Ghostbusters, was he wearing like a rhinestone glove and, <laughs> and a red jacket? Was it- Do you want to fall in my father's eyes? <laughs> <laughs> he look- you're, so- you're doing so well, Mike. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, I- look, look the- this is the thing, though, too, is because I've-, I've talked to Catherine about this like off-air, too, and I can, I can a- definitely ask her on-air, and if your dad is listening as well, I definitely want to formally invite him on the podcast so I can apologize and shake his hand like shake a man. Shake his hand and like yeah, a man. And then we can- we'll definitely sing his praises for as long as we can. But you guys also missed the, and not to go back, because I know you did a beautiful segue there, mm-hmm. but I just rolled my eyes aggressively. <laughs> my dad had one of the best jokes oh, yes, that he said aloud this. during the Twilight screening. Oh, now, yeah, set up the scene. I think it was during the big, and by the way, people are talking that about this sex thing. Scene, it's, like, it's like one of the biggest sex scenes ever. But, I mean, it's, but it's, it's not. Really, it's so it's terrible. actually terrible. It's ter- yeah. I mean, they're, 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 Sharon Stone has had far better sex scenes than anything. Well, gr- well Sharon Stone mine. is like an all, like Sharon Stone has her ju- or her dress retired in the Hall yes, of Fame. Of I sex mean, scenes. That, yeah. That's not all she has retired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one of my friends read the books, uh, the Twilight book, and said that the sex scene is so huge because the, she wakes up in the bed. She actually blacks out because he's so strong. Mm-hmm. And he, he fucks her. And I've gotten that report out. from women the next day. Myself. No, no, totally, yeah. totally, Mark. Yeah, totally. No, I my, get that. My raw you. power in the bedroom. <laughs> yeah. No, an animal. Animal instinct is what I smell yeah. in you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but that, that Bella blacks out because he fucks her so hard and she wakes up and she's covered in bruises and the room right. is destroyed. It's really not that eventful in the it's film. It's not. It's it's, and they played it more. I thought that's another reason. I thought Conan did not do a good job. It, it got played more as comedy with the whole when he breaks the stuff. And well, I think that depends on your theater. It certainly did for my father. Who the moment that Edward breaks the bed, yeah. my father says, not in a quiet joke to your friend voice, very loud <laughs> booming voice. Guess they don't make them like they used to, huh? <laughs> he looks left. He looks right. No one's laughing. <laughs> I'm like, oh, God. We get in the car later, and my dad goes, I guess that one was kind of a stinker. <laughs> that's, see, that's amazing. That's he, know, he, know, he knows it. He, uh, it was really, that's really No, funny. I love him. And his, he usually, I love seeing, I don't like when people talk through movies. We all right. feel the same way yes. uh, about, you know, terrible etiquette in the film, while watching a film. My dad's commentary during movies is brilliant. Yeah. He usually has, like, great jokes, great timing. This one was so loud and so bad. I could not stop talking about it when I left the theater. It just made me so happy. That's really funny. So, yeah, I'm glad that that was the kill Christian Harloff uh, 15 minutes. I appreciate that. All right. And we're over it. And we're we're through it. And we'll, you know, this week I'll teach you how to shake a man's hand properly. You don't give him a dead fish. That's right. You do not give him a dead fish. It was kind of like a high five, like, give me some skin. No way. Yeah, Yeah. he's not one of your skateboarding (laughs) bros, Christian. All right, this this is official. (laughs) Jeremy Johns is going to move to California. He's going to be my co host. Catherine Ryan is fired. We're flying in bright eyes, long lashes. Hey, Catherine, you want to do a podcast from your dad's place? Me and my father maybe just do like a three way podcast. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. The only three way we'll ever do. So just. The only rule is that if if Ivan Reitman's going to be a regular on our podcast, he never does Christians. That's Uh, that's Well, I don't think he would ever want to. (laughs) All right, all right, enough of this. We got to move on, but this is. So much fun. Let's go to a nicer, lighter side of things, um, please. Uh, and that would be kids' movies. Yay. There have been there have been three mo- three kids' movies that Mark and I have seen, and two that Catherine have seen because we're better than her this um, week. Yeah, yes. and and a little bit of history on this too. Like like we started this thing what three years ago? You about that? And since we've been doing these reviews on YouTube, some of my favorite movies. I think I smoke kids' movies higher than anything else. Because animation, animation. animation, animation movies because they're yeah because well not Smurfs. They're, they're most of them are not just for kids. Right. There's something for everybody, and the comedy writing is so strong in these movies. And we really had a good run this week. And that was the thing is that well actually you know what I take that. That back. I'm actually the only person here that's seen three. Uh, Mark and Catherine have seen two. Um, I reviewed three. We get three. it. We get I it. Know. You're no, the best. Well, well, no, but now we all have a perspective all the way around the board. I can be the mediator. Um, now- also, the villain in my father's eyes. Continue. That's <laughs> <laughs> just all right. Forget it. I, I love Ghostbusters. This horse is dead. I get right, it. Right, I get right. it. All right. So let's talk about what Mark said that the writing is good for adults and it can yeah. be really funny. Now I think that for. Uh, with these movies, Which one do you want to talk about the, That's what I'm saying. With two of these animation movies, there is one that that's true and one that's not true. I think that Happy Feet 2 mm-hmm. did not hit that adult comedy thing. I think it was more, for, more for kids. Um, yeah. I think kids would love it. You know, it's just it, the story was a little sloppy, but I did not think yeah, that the, was... 
The so. jokes in Happy Feet 2 uh, are accidental because probably talented actors improvise them. Yeah. Uh, but the writing itself, it's, it's a kid's movie, and it's a good kid's movie. It's just not, it doesn't hit the bar. It's sort of knee slappy. It, it doesn't have that same yeah. level that most kids movies do these days. Yeah. Yeah, and I think to oh. me that was the reason that I, I didn't like it that much. I thought there were much better kid movies out there, too. I think that it's good for like a three or a four-year-old if you're like, oh, Thanksgiving, like the kid's going crazy, and you throw it on the DVD, and they'll be happy no pun intended for like you know take it easy and Crystal. yeah and so. again and i was out of town when, so i couldn't go to the screening anyway right. but even if i was in town the screening was at four o'clock on sunday and i would have complained about going like i don't want to miss football well christian and i Happy shared Feet some too. chocolate we, we had did. a good time Great you guys saw it too. you guys went to the same screening we did yes. oh wow i missed yes. a party she saved me a seat this time that's yeah. right i did and, and anyway I'm, I'm so i'm so emotionally distraught right now you gotta take get it over easy. it man you know what Dude. else i liked about happy feet too what if i may yeah um is the music. See, I, I, that's what I didn't like about it. I'm like a real sucker for And yeah. I do realize there's it's, a lot of... She was bobbing her head and dancing to it. Okay, she was a footloose. Listen, you were. Listen, I'm, 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 a, I'm a sucker <laughs> for like good beats. There was definitely a few newer contemporary songs where I'm like, that's kind of cheesy. Yeah. But I get into it. I, have, I like when... And you could feel like the vibe in the audience changes when a good song comes on and they're all dancing around. And, and that's the thing is that I agree. Absolutely. You did feel that. But I also thought to me it was more of a gimmick than it furthered the story. Like Mark and I were talking about like the classic Disney films like even something like the lion king when the music came in it furthered the story this didn't as much it was like oh well they're gonna sing and dance now give them something to sing oh let's throw in a a gwen stefani song or something you know and then they that was my least favorite part of shrek is is like at the end when they when they do uh like baby got back or whatever they do at the end i'm like you don't need this you told us a great story i don't need to see the music video that's the whole movie you remember the end of family matters when they did they did do the urkel like like they they ended the show i don't need this and that's what they do shrek in general is not funny to me though No, the first one I'm not a fan of any of the shrinks. Oh, wow. They're okay. not well, for that, me. That's a whole other that, that cat, that yeah. Puss in Boots cat. Oh, my God. is That that cat is so cute. I'm almost ready to take on the responsibility of getting a kid. Uh, I would never come over your place <laughs> again. Um, I hate cats. All right. Now, the the other one, though, that definitely does explore the adult humor that I, I, I'm i shocked how great this movie we was. We were blown away, man. Oh, my God. Arthur Christmas. I'm so bummed I didn't see it. You, oh, you have to see it. It, it honestly, I because there's nothing better, first of all, that when you don't know anything about a movie and you just expect it's going to be just a generic piece of shit and it's not and it's it's funny it's got it's got last it's got a nice heart to it and it has one of the best comedic performances of the year yeah it's uh it, it really does it's uh, and, and we were talking about afterwards the uh the the older santa claus yeah uh the, the now retired santa claus is uh it, it's like a lloyd bridges and hot shots kind of thing yep. i mean everything that guy says he just knocks it out of the park just fantastic yeah and are there and going into it i'm thinking this is gonna be for kids this is gonna skew like a happy feet would but man i mean and you know what's fun about it is that you always whenever you see a christmas movie about santa claus you always get this explanation as to how they make it around the world to drop off billions of presents. And I like when it's a fun, interesting take on it. And this really was cool. Like in other Christmas presents, delivering presents in one night, that's a, like a military operation in this movie. And it's so cool to see how they pull it off. And then the humor on top of it is just. Well, that actually answers a question because I've been seeing the billboards and I got to be honest, I've had zero interest in yeah, Santa. Until you guys told me that you were right. excited, mm-hmm. I'm like, really? Yeah. A, it looks like also it's like for young boys or something. It just looks boring and. I no, boyish to me and it's not that's the and i i totally agree with how you felt that way because every time i see that billboard of just like all oh, elf is going to break loose and he's like oh they need gimmicks to get people in and then they start and it's the movie starts off and it's just british accents everywhere i'm like oh what am i in for here it's always that five minute adjustment period when everybody's speaking in a british accent like when you watch a monty python movie you have to get acclimated yeah, to what like, they're what, saying what are we doing here and then it's just it's clever it's mm-hmm. like it, it there are characters that are set up there's a reason behind everything it drags a little bit for like you know there's like, a couple of, it, it, it's like if you're driving down a great highway there's a couple times when you pull over to a gas station yeah. to get some jerky it, it, but you're back on the highway right, in no time. yeah but that that's fine and I, and I honestly I laughed out loud so many times during this movie and it was it was 99% of the time was the old the retired rolling Santa Claus. laughs like you laugh once Big and then you time. think about it and then you keep laughing it's it's, yeah exactly it's stuff that like you, so funny it's stuff that oh, you'd I watch yeah that. it's really you're really going to like it I, I can't wait. yeah because it's 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 witty it's it's exciting uh, and if you guys have not heard of Arthur Christmas, check it out. And I'm telling you, you can really enjoy it, especially if you're a fan of animated films. And it's there's only been two holiday movies so far. Yeah. It's the best so far. Didn't have to be in 3D. That, that'd be my only complaint. I didn't really Everything's I didn't need in 3D. It in 3D. Yeah. Yeah, talk right. about gimmicks. Yeah. yeah. And I'll tell you what, though. That they, I can understand why they need the gimmick, though, because it's another movie that does. It's not, a, it's not an established brand. 
Right. So it's, I hope it does well. I do too, and but it, it, it needs it, it to add the extra bu- the extra bucks. And but look what we're talking about here. We're talking about three different kids movies that are coming out. So it has competition. Yeah, it's got big competition. And there's yeah. a movie coming out yeah, that uh, is not in 3D. Thank no. goodness they didn't do this. No. And they asked that too. And they asked the two of the, the main characters why they why they didn't do it. They, they asked Waldorf and Statler. Oh, why, why they didn't do the 3D. <laughs> 3D. Of course, uh, we're talking about the Muppets. The Muppets. Yes. And we, we, we had the privilege of seeing the Muppet movie. And my goodness, it, it felt like I felt like I was a five-year-old yeah. kid. I felt know? like I was a little kid again. Yeah. And it was just, there, there are problems with it, of course. There definitely are. But the thing is, it, for the most part, for me, I felt, again, like I was back with the gang. It was just fun to watch them. And, and we said this in our review, is that you have to get over the voices. And the, they're not 100% on... But you get over it. And I just thought it was just so cool. Yeah. The, the voices for me were not a problem. No. The problem was the writing and the directing. Really? Are how you, but how do you judge directing on a Muppet movie? Very easily. Oh, the cool. director uh, who previously has only done TV. He, this is his feature directorial debut. He did uh, the Ali G show and oh, okay. uh, Flight of the Concords. Right. So he's, he's usually right. working with real talent that sort of writes the show. I mean, they run the game. He just sort of knows how to properly facilitate them. Here he's all of a sudden got a huge feature film, mm-hmm. which required a lot of guidance because it's a delicate matter. It's got a huge fan base. I mean, the origin story is huge, right? Right. And I think the writing is so self-conscious and so cutesy and so lazy. It's constantly making references to, well, this is an obstacle. Well, this is a plot point. But they always did well, that in the Muppet movies. Much more subtly. This, I mean, or they did it funny. Yeah, but I, oh, see, I see. I disagree. I liked. I, I, I would I have really liked to have stuff. seen the Muppets in the like. I thought, it, and it always is like the Muppets in the real world. And I thought in Hollywood that worked really well. Yeah. I, I, I felt like the whole small town thing because there's a there's a Muppet named Walter, mm. and he lives in small town with his brother Jason Siegel. Right. And Jason Siegel's with Amy Adams, and they all live in this little. It's like a Grover's Corners, but even like more like small towny. I didn't need that much of a of a. Hey, we're just these country bumpkins going to the big. Uh, I, I didn't need that much. I of liked it. it, man. I I, I again. But I, again, have, but again, they're all small. They're all small complaints because yeah. you get you get so much great screen time with just them up. And that was the and thing that's what that, you want. And so I liked I liked uh, the singing and dancing and stuff in it too because it reminded mm-hmm. me of the old movie. The only thing that I didn't really uh, that I wish I. And Catherine made this point before we went on the air is the fact that uh, Jason Siegel plays it a little too uppity and he could have played like a real character. And that would have been fun. I wish it was just Jason Siegel. Every single actor in this movie is attempting to be a Muppet themselves. And I think that's another (laughs) director situation. I think he should have been a lot more. He needs to be. They need hands on directing i mean they're yeah. they're but way over the top i thought jack black hit it out of the park and i think and i think most of the other chris humans cooper, man. Was, chris cooper was chris awesome cooper, i didn't like him as much as you did but oh, i liked I him them. but he, my big problem with the muppet movie it was then my only big problem is that it kind of teases you because you know there's going to be a lot of cameos you yeah. know everybody wants to work with oh, the muppets this, this right is a, this is a good gripe and and the movie kind of teases you through the whole thing. It's like, hey, we're going to have some huge cameos in the end. And God love Neil Patrick Harris and the kid from Big Bang Theory. But if those no, it's are a f- a fam- what's the a cam- family? What's it? Not Big Bang Theory. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I know what I'm talking no, about. It was the other Playing kid? The I actually do a movie review show online. I know, if you I know. Think of the other kid too. But the and it's, Modern it's, Family. I, and I, I love this too. Is it, is it there? There's a lot of throwbacks to the Muppet Show when it was on TV, and you had all these great guest stars like Alice Cooper used to do it all the time. Mark Hamill was on it. Right. Knocked it out of the park. Steve Martin, and you're waiting for for all these guys to kind of come back, and and it, it more disappointed me for the cameos that weren't in it. You know why? Because the cameos were Jason Siegel's friends. You feel like you're watching Jason Siegel, who finally gets this this movie on its feet. They they wanted him to do it. He agreed to do it. I think he gets I'm all his friends on board. I'm glad he did it because he was one of the driving forces. Oh, because see, I'm, he, I'm because you can, that he did you it. can see this movie is dripping with with fan passion yes. about the Muppets. Well, yeah. I think I like that's that. the problem. I think it's his passion actually got in his own way. Hear me out. Okay. I think the guy is really talented. Mm-hmm. I've worked with him. I'm a friend of his. I dig Jason Siegel. Yeah. I really like him as a person. However, I think. He was such a fan. He got so overwhelmed by his own fandom that he got in his own way. And the story isn't as clean as it could be. They, there should be someone else in there. It isn't as clean as it could be. I would have liked Stoller. it a little more linear, but... Uh, to, to I me, mean, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm hating a lot. And I just want to get this out. I had a really good time watching the movie. Like you said, Christian, I had so much fun watching the Muppets again. Animal C storyline is uh, just about <laughs> as good as it gets. That was my gripe. Is that uh-huh. he did not once. I, Animal's my favorite. I love seeing his backstory. But once we did not get this. Woman, woman. Right. Chase her around. I mean, right. But it, it opens it up. Look, I hope. Also, are, there were so many storylines that didn't even get like Gonzo. Gonzo was in it like once. I know. I know. Gonzo, we could have seen more. But here's the thing, though. 
what I think this accomplishes. G- G- Gonzo knocked it out of the park. Yeah, and that toilet it, scene. Yeah. <laughs> now look, this this is what this movie does. It brings the Muppets back in, back into the public consciousness. What it does in the storyline and mm-hmm. what it does for for kids. Now I'm hoping that kids now who have the uh, you know the happy feats and the toy stories. Can re- can like and enjoy the Muppets because it's not this CGI stuff. And if they do, and if they come back, then we can see more of Animal, and then we can see more. Of can Let's I ask bring you both back. an honest question? And just I want you to close your eyes for a moment, okay, and answer from your deepest heart, okay. your soul, your instincts. That's more of a command than a question. Yeah, sure. Well, that's co- sort of my personality. <laughs> <laughs> you guys watched Muppet films growing up, yes, and Muppet Babies. Loved Muppet yes. Babies. Let's stay on topic. Okay, Mark. sorry. So you guys love those movies. Mm-hmm. Is this Muppets as funny as the other movies? No, but that's but that's not. Well, wait, wait, wait. When I say that, I, not as funny as the first one, and not as funny as Muppets Take Manhattan. But I would Treasure Island. I don't remember that one. Which uh, one was that? Nowhere near as funny as Treasure Island. Okay, even but, Space. Yeah, Island. And and the Muppets Take Manhattan was great. Right. No, it's not. It's not as funny. But I, I I think that they know that too. This is almost and you know it's it, just to bring them back and get them yeah. back in. That's I, I mean, mean that, but is that enough? I like that they're back too. I'm so excited that right. they're back and they're back in the consciousness. But is it enough? They could have grand slammed it. But why can't they do it in the sequel now? Well, you sure. Think, you think no, it's enough to kill it? Do you think it's enough to kill it? No, I don't. That's what I mean. It's like it's not. It's not but enough. But aren't we film critics? Aren't we allowed to no, say we're you're not. making no. it? <laughs> we're not. <laughs> I'm a fan of the Muppets. Dan. Yeah, we're just we're people who I, I like see movies. where you're going with but this. As so. a, but also, as, but exactly, film critic Schmidt. I'm talking about as an enthusiast, right? Yeah, a film enthusiast. Uh-huh. Don't we? Th- can't we just set a bar higher and go? Okay, I'm so glad you yes. did it. But now you should be funnier. Yes. You've got to be cleaner, not so obvious with the writing. Do I think that? I think we have done that because we all we all agree that we like the Muppet movie. But yeah, yeah I mean, most the, of this the, conversation is us talking about picking out the flaws in it. Look, it's like seeing Van Halen with Sammy Hagar. Is it fun? Is it a great concert? Yeah, but but Dave ain't walking through that door, so you have to know that it's never going to be as great as the original Muppets. Yes, were. and well, we need to we need to get Frank Oz back. Sounds like right on the cusp. Well, Let's yeah, get Frank well, Oz. We were back. talking about that. Yeah. It, Frank Oz did not. He he read the script and he didn't want to uh, do it. Well, apparently, from what I. I on, wonder why. From what I read in Entertainment Week. For all you kids out there, Frank Oz is also Yoda. That's right. Um, right you are. Uh, animal! Uh, that's right. <laughs> that was Animal doing a Yoda impression, yeah. what you just did. Um, well, anyway, <laughs> they, are we going to do Yoda for the rest of the show? Yeah. All right. Oh, so on Entertainment me. Weekly, they, what they had said was that a lot of like the puppeteers, and there was a lot of friction on, on the set. Mm-hmm. and that you know, Why do you think that is, Christian? I think because... And one of the because th- well, Kermit's the reason, a prick behind closed well, doors. He's right. No, the reason great. Frank Oz apparently left um, was that he didn't think that it that they were following the way that the, Mupp- the, the way certain Muppets would act and the characters and, and stuff along that like, line. Like the, the personality? Yeah. Like, I mean, like it, oh, Kermit wouldn't do that, a piggy wouldn't do that? Yeah, because okay. apparently in earlier drafts... Ha- I'm so sorry, but I do have something exactly along those lines. Mm-hmm. So Kermit the Frog and Miss Piggy have a long romance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've always thought that he sort of blows her off, not intentionally or from mean-spirited. It's sort of always almost accidental, right? It's yeah. like something else happens and he gets confused and she's too passionate and... I always he, thought he was kind of he was kind of pulling away from her. Like I always thought she was so madly in love with him. Yeah. He, yes. he kind of seems like he's reciprocating the love in this one. Um, maybe he just missed her. But my point was that I think he actually is a prick to her on this one. I think he was, and I think that's a Jason Segelism. No, Kermit was not a prick to Miss Piggy. I think there's a little bit of a prickism going. on. He had on. a lot of stuff going on. Piggy he, was the last one to get her fat ass on a Come plane on. back to America to do the show. Easy with the weight jokes, he, Mark. He we was, both know why. I'm sorry, Piggy. Look, you look great in this one. He was, yeah. He had a lot in his plate. She's breaking his balls about stuff. It's like leave him alone. Let him finish up his show, and then let's talk about. This they have future. a mansion together with a yeah. with, with a frog and a pig yeah. on the gate. Who's living at the house? Is the pig living? No, the right. pig. The pig skipped town and is in and is. Right. And it is Meryl Paris. Street from the Devil Wears yeah, Prada. Because yeah. I mean, he goes out there and he asks her to help everybody out. And she's like, oh, it's never you need. It's always we need. And he's like, yeah, we need your help. It's like, Kermit uh, can I, nail any bro. I'm I think, I think Kermit was. Mis- I'm pretty sure Kermit was banging Rashida Jones, though. I think there's, there's a direct That's very possible. Cut. Yeah, I, that is I think very that possible. did happen at there some point. some stuff going on there. It makes sense to me, guys. See how Fine. much fun the Muppets are? God, right. I'm, God, it was so now, good to see them. Now, something you had mentioned earlier, Catherine, we, and this is now we're done with all those stories, but something that you had brought up that I would like to talk about is the girl with the dragon tattoo. Yeah. Now, that is a movie. Oh, we're on this now, huh? Yeah, I mean, there's a definite speaking, tone speaking jump. Speaking of kids' movies. Yeah, right. A tough, <laughs> definite tone jump. And from popular novels... And I, again, reading about David Fincher, um, you know, you know that every time he comes out with something, 
it's going to get noticed. You no, know, mm-hmm. are we going into Oscar season with this movie? Uh, you know, going to be taking some stuff. You know, last year he had the Social Network. So this year, are we going to see this one out there? Are we just going to see something for Rooney Mara? Or are we going to see something for? Well, he got snubbed. I mean, he didn't get the Oscar. Sure, he got nominated. He got nominated, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah but he did didn't he get take... snubbed though. I mean, the King's hell yeah, he didn't take good. home the prize. You know, King's Speech is a pretty. good I movie. actually thought that the Social Network, in many ways, is a better film than the King's Speech. Yeah, uh, King's Speech is pretty damn it's good. Pretty damn good. Listen, um, it, but it's also, <laughs> I feel like it gets so much credit for being like a very smart film, but Social Network was sort of. Like very I lo- contemporary I love and the revolutionary, Network, and it was one of the four, only films I gave five out of five schmoes. They're, they're both great, great films. It's, it's a great one. Um, I think that I, uh, this is going to come as a shock to no one that I haven't read the the Dragon Tattoo or the you know what is Pearl it that you Earring do series. when you're not here? I play a lot of Tetris, Catherine. Uh, I play a lot yes, of Tetris. Yes, yes. I'm the world's greatest. Challenge me. Try it. Uh, is is I, I, and I see the trailer for the Dragon Tattoo, and I'm I'm a little confused as to what's going on, so I can't prognosticate in the future if it's going to be an award movie. However, I I think that Trent Reznor or make it nominated again because okay. he did the score yeah. for it score again, and man that, that, that music Bad in the trailer ass. gets you going the trailer looks it's amazing it's so artistic looks, man. oh god the movie looks now, so good now granted you can't tell what's going on because it's not no a storytelling idea. trailer Clueless. it is an art trailer yeah, and yeah. I love every second of it yeah me too and I, and I think man, Catherine it, just it, did something with her that, that trailer's got her fancy huh? I right. need to be alone for four <laughs> minutes <laughs> <laughs> it's, it is it's a and it's also a very brutal book and it's not you know, David Fincher did you read it um, no, but I know enough about it. Right. I have it. I'm, I'm I read the books. I saw all the oh, Swedish you did. films. You read all the books? I read all the wow, books. Okay. I, re- I watched all the Swedish films. I'm wow. completely up to date on this yeah. film. See, that that's one thing I won't do. Is I might read the book, but I don't think that I'm going to watch the film because I don't I don't want to compare you know that that one in the Fincher's version but I, I still have to read the Hunger good. Games for some reason oh you have still to watch have the to read the Hunger they're Games. fantastic and they're, they're going to be them, so different I might watch them after I you see know the why because you'll watch it and you'll go this is not it's similar to Hunger Games yeah. well for me not for you I guess but casting wise the Swedish films I was like Ugh, what is going on here uh, oh and, so you like the Swedish films but you're not one of these people that says oh why are you remaking it you want you want them to make no, it no I'm happy they are because I really dig Rooney Mara okay. I, Daniel Craig I love the cast they so you're okay with Mara then I think she's going to be great Scarlett Johansson? <laughs> yeah, just a drop. <laughs> yeah, that would have been a disaster. Bro, really? She, yeah, she was rumored for it. You don't think so she would Natalie be good Bo- in it? No, no, she's not. no I, way. Look, I think she's sexy as all hell, but I, she is not a good actress. She's Those were some not. good pictures she sent me from her phone. She's oh, also just oh, not the right really look. Creepy hack. Talk about another protagonist that's constantly being referenced for being tiny. Right. So Scarlett Johansson's, you know, yeah. she's, she's a sex she's object. She's voluptuous. She, yeah. yeah, she you looks great. You don't cast her for her chops. She makes me feel funny. No. No. Um, so I mean, four I'm, minutes. I'm, I, I am <laughs> super, two minutes. Yeah, I am super excited for that movie. I think it's going to be one of the best of the year. The trailer. Like, it was the only good thing about when I saw Straw Dogs was the fact that they had played that the trailer. Right Wasn't that cool? Him. They played like a. It was like a, a four minute music, trailer. So like badass. That. Yeah. It was. It was. It was awesome. It looks really cool. Daniel Craig needs something off a of Dreamhouse. Um, yep. so. He needs to get in shape for the new Bond man. Now and that's coming out soon too. That's so. right. That's right. I mean, oh, can we talk about this real quick? Yeah. Too? Well, I mean, and this is just because we're talking about movies that yeah, are coming out yeah, now. Yeah. This Mission Impossible thing, man, I am excited, excited as huh? all hell for this wow, thing. Are you going to see this it in IMAX? Looks awesome. I got this for, on good authority from our good buddy Schmo friend Mike Black. Said that it, like if you see apparently if you see Mission Impossible before in IMAX, they'll show the first six minutes. Oh, of yeah, the, the new the Dark Knight. Yeah. But Mike Ooh. said make sure you call the theater ahead of time to make sure it's a real IMAX and not just barring an IMAX screen like right. AMC Century. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because right. sometimes they say it's an IMAX, but it's not at an IMAX theater. Right. It's only at IMAX theaters that you can see the Batman. Yes, so, I agree. but but even reg- <laughs> I said that like the Penguin, like the old school. Hey, you can see the Batman. <laughs> uh, I, I think that, uh, but yeah, th- this Mission Impossible thing, I am so excited. I, man. I, I'm only a fan of one and three. I I'm a fan a of all of them. Yeah, those movies don't do much yeah, for me. I'm, I'm kind of. Oh, oh, I'm gonna great. watch them. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I don't I get cranked the same man. way. Is J.J. Abrams doing it? Uh, no, no right? it. Uh, I can't remember who. I can't remember who. Think of when I think of Mission Impossible Three now is you know how they like all the paparazzi, you see all the photos of like Tom Cruise doing his own stunts on the side of a building. Yeah, and I can just picture him afterwards like celebrating himself and looking in the mirror. I don't know, it just bugs me. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm, ex- I'm excited. I think the guy's got it. I think the guy's got balls of steel. He to also do those has stunts, long man. lady hair on this one. Yeah, well, he usually does in the, in the Mission Impossible movies. He's Shagadon. no, he 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 went short for the first oh, one, he? long for the second one, short for the third and back one, to and now we're back to gotcha. long. So okay. Mark Ellis is a big fan. Wow. Uh, hey, hey, look, look if you don't like Tom Cruise, you know, you probably don't like cheeseburgers and Coke either. I mean, come on. All right. Well, that, that is going to that's going to wrap us up this week. Um, dun, 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 dun. 
dun, wow. Dun, dun. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yes, we had a really good conversation. I'm glad with all this stuff. We've learned a lot. It's good to be back in the studio, it guys. Is. It's I, nice I to have feel you the love. Big time. Yeah. Yes, you can always check out Catherine Reitman at youtube.com backslash Catherine Reitman, breaking it down. Uh, you can catch a schmoes, www.youtube.com backslash schmoes no. And also, again, check us out and make sure if you're on iTunes, rate and comment. And, and for, we're going to start reading off some of your comments next mm-hmm. week Can't on the podcast. Can't wait. So um, do it. Like us on Facebook, at Schmoes No That's is right. the Twitter handle. I'm getting in with the kids, man. I like it. I like it. All right, guys. So thanks again. And the next week's podcast is really cool. We're having editor-in-chief Matt Atchity from Rotten Tomatoes on here. We're going to be doing a lot of chit-chat. Peace out. Bye. <laughs>